John 10, 28, Jesus says, I give my sheep eternal life. They will never die, and no one can take them out of my hand. Not even the strongest muscle man or a huge giant could steal us from God's hand. God is still stronger. For me, I sit alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Corinthians 13 verse 8. Love never ends. Even when I slurp my chocolate milk and it is gone, gone. And even though a fun day stops at bedtime, love never stops. It keeps going and going and going. Woohoo! I love love. Listen to kids. Shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes And eyes and ears and mouth and nose Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes 
Psalm 119, verse 73. With your hands you made me and helped me become who I am. That's right, God made the fastest cheetahs, the biggest mountains, and the brightest stars. God is really good at making things. His hands made all the cool stuff in the world and used those same hands to make us just the way we are. This is the light of my Morning, Antove Primary. This morning, our theme for the devotion this morning is showing love to others. Now, boys and girls, sometimes we have different persons that we show love to. We have our parents, our grandparents, our other relatives, teachers, sometimes even persons that we meet on the street. We show love. <clears throat> now I want you to sit back and listen to this song that we have prepared for you. It's about how wonderful God's love is. Miss Scott? A prayer before we start our day. Let us thank God for the lovely things He has given us. For all that he has given us.
Okay, boys and girls, I hope you were listening. And as you go through today, I want to remember our theme, showing love to others. Just take a little moment and think how you can show love to others, the different things that you can do to show love to others. You don't have to give them money to show love. Saying a kind word, doing a kind deed, do something nice and when we are in class you, your classmate is to do something and you laugh behind their backs no you love by probably as prompting the person or give the person a say and then you applaud them and then you can point out all right so don't just let us dwell on the negative we are going to show love to others by being nice the gentle and being thoughtful to them. We continue our devotion by reading from St. Luke 10, 25 to 37. Miss Dania, the scripture reading for this morning. Miss Dania, are you here? All right. I am. Please give Miss um, um, access, Mrs. Walters. She, yeah, I know she's using your laptop. You see. I'm seeing Miss Dehaney, but um, I think her audio is not connected. She's using Miss Henry's laptop, so please unmute Miss Henry. Okay, Miss Henry can go ahead. She can go ahead. Go ahead, Miss. Tell her to go ahead. Okay. Okay, good morning, Mrs. Mitchell. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, parents. Good morning, boys and girls. Or script. Unmute Miss Henry. Okay, good morning, Ms. Mitchell. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, parents, boys and girls. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from 10 verses 25 through to 37. And it reads thus, And behold, a certain Lord came up and tempted him, saying, What shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy might and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. 
but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his pouring oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever is more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thou was neighbor unto him that among the thieves? And he said, Show mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Here endeth a portion of God's word. Thank you, Mr. for reminding us of the pro that what Jesus says that we are to show love to others. Now, boys and girls, as we continue, you have just of the story about the Samaritan. So I'm going to ask that you sit back, relax, and you're going to get a, a minute or two of the story of the Samaritan. While you're watching, I want you to Think about how can I show love to someone today? So while you're watching, think about it. Once, while Jesus was preaching, a man decided to test how good a teacher Jesus was. Jesus, I have a question for you. Can you tell me what it is I should do so that I can live eternally in heaven? Jesus looked at him with a quiet smile for some time and then replied, Do you read the Bible? Of course I do. What kind of a question is that? So if you read the Bible, can you tell me what the Bible says? The Bible says that I should love God with my heart and soul, and that I should love my neighbor as I love myself. Well then, there you have your answer. What I don't understand is who my neighbor is supposed to be, whom I should love as I love myself. Jesus was quiet for a few moments, and then replied, The answer to that question is not... And this is the story Jesus related to the man for the answer he was seeking. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. There were many small hills around the road he was walking, with many rocks lying there. It was a lovely sunny day, and the man was softly singing to himself as he walked along. Suddenly, as he was passing a small hill, some men came running out from behind the hill and charged at him. They took away everything that the man had, even tearing away his clothes. The evil robbers beat up the poor man mercilessly. He was bleeding badly, but they just kicked him even more and left him by the roadside. Soon after, a priest came walking down the road. When he saw the bleeding man, he thought to himself, I wonder who that fellow lying there is. I don't know what has happened to him, but I am already very late. I do not have the time to stop and help him. I'm sure someone else will come and do something. 
He looks dead to me already. Anyway. The priest just crossed the road and continued walking without a backward glance. A little while later, a Levite, a man whose job was to help priests in their work, happened to pass down the same road. He too saw the beaten and bleeding man lying there. He stopped for a moment and slowly made his way up to the man. I cannot make out if this fellow is dead or alive. Even if he is alive, I doubt he will be alive for long, the way he is bleeding. I don't think I can help him in any way. I better be going along on my way. The Levite too left the injured man without even trying to help him and walked away hurriedly. After about an hour or two later, a Samaritan was walking down the same road with his donkey. As soon as he saw the man lying on the road, he ran up to him. Now the Jews were known to dislike the Samaritans and treat them very badly. However, this Samaritan did not even stop to think of all this. He just saw a bruised human being needing help very badly, and because of his compassionate nature, went forward to try and do what he could. Oh, what has happened? Who has done this to you? The man opened his eyes and tried to talk, but winced in pain when he tried to do it. You poor man, I can see you are in a lot of pain. Don't try and talk now. Here, let me have a look at your wounds. Hmm, they look quite bad. Don't you worry now, I will try my best to see that you are comfortable and get well soon. The Samaritan went donkey and came back with a bag containing He then proceeded to apply them on the man's wounds so that they would heal. When the man saw what the Samaritan was doing, he made a feeble attempt to stop him. No! No! Too expensive! Why are you looking at the cost of some oil and wine, my good fellow? At this moment it is your injuries that matter, not money. Now just relax and let me apply these to your wounds. I'm sure they will give you some relief. The good Samaritan very carefully applied the oil and wine to the injured man's wounds and put on some bandages also to prevent them from getting infected. Ah, now that that is done, let us get you to some inn where you can rest and recover. Very gently, the Samaritan helped the man up onto his donkey and started leading him to the inn. After walking for a few hours, they reached a small town where the Samaritan asked for directions to the nearest inn. There, we have arrived. Now just wait here for a few minutes while I talk to the man in charge about getting a room for you. No money. I have told you not to worry about that. I just want you to get well soon. The Samaritan went inside the inn and found the man who was in charge. My good man, I have outside a man who is badly injured. I would be grateful if you could give him a comfortable room where he can recover. Here, I am leaving with you some money for his room, as well as his food. Please take good care of him and let him live here till he is recovered enough to go on his way. The owner heard him that the man would be taken care of. The Samaritan then went outside, helped the man down from the donkey, and accompanied him to the room in the inn. Well, my friend, it is time for me to leave. I have taken care of everything. You just rest and get well. Don't know how to thank you. You don't have to thank me. I have just done what the good Lord would have wanted me to do. When the story ended, Jesus looked at the man who had questioned him. 
Now, can you tell me who you think would be your neighbor? The priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan? The Samaritan, of course. He was the only one who showed compassion to someone who badly needed help. You are right. The priest is the one who serves God, but he was indifferent to the plight of the man's pain. Yes, even the Levite who works in the house of the Lord did not help. It was only the Samaritan who came to the man's help, and he was helping a Jew, even though he knew that the Jews do not like Samaritans. Yes, Jesus, I understand now who we should consider our neighbors, who God wants us to love as we love ourselves. So, if you want to go to heaven and live there eternally, love the Lord with your whole being and love your neighbors too. Okay, boys and girls, thank you for listening. Now, Paul here don't it it gives you a message all right i want just a few just type in the chat and tell us what message you love this story just a few all right so the moral of the story is that you should put aside your differences and try as best as you can boys and girls not to trade evil if you you at all times you are to seek to help those who are in need of your help even if to you the person had done you some wrong you are still to do what the bible says and extend love care and compassion to those persons as the samaritan did remember they were not like samaritans were not liked by the jews and yet he did not twice he went and he helped so it says in saint luke 10 and verse 27 it says that you should love the lord your god with all your heart all your strength and all your soul and your neighbor as yourself and remember now you see in the story where it's not necessarily a person that lives next door to you all right, and remember, love is an action word, so you have to do something. As the song says that, love is like a money. If you keep it all to yourself, don't share with anybody. It's not going to grow, but share the love. Be caring, be kind, be gentle. Say nice things to each other. Then we are sharing the love, and in no time, we have a whole nation of people who are loving, caring, compassionate and we will of course have less and less lawlessness right okay boys and girls so wrap up and we are going to because we cannot do what we want to do without the presence of the lord so i'm going to invite miss henry to come and offer a word of perfect okay. miss henry Using earphones, you can use a earphone. Okay. Good morning, boys. After such a lovely story, I do hope that you have learned something. Now we're gonna approach the throne of grace. I'm gonna ask that you all what you're doing, close your eyes, bounce. I'll give you a few minutes. Close your eyes, bow your heads, everybody. Remember, we're going to talk to God. Close your eyes, each and every one of you. Most righteous and eternal Father, we give you thanks for this, another wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, that we are able to see, we are able to walk, 
we are able to talk. Mighty God, some of us may not be feeling well, but nonetheless, with a heart of God, we bow in thanksgiving. As we end another week, we ask for your guidance, protection, your leading in all we do and in all we say. As we continue to reach out to our students, mighty God, we ask for strength, wisdom, and understanding. Cover every single student, mighty God, across the length and breadth of this our island. Open their minds, give them a desire to learn. As they may face the many challenges, mighty God, Help them to understand that you are a very present help in trouble. Lord, remember the homes from which they are from. Remember their parents, oh God. Continue to guide us. us. Give us your peace, mighty God, that all understanding. Great God, grant unto us that which we fail to ask of thee. Thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. You may open your eyes, boys and girls. I know turn over back to Mrs. Williams. Thank you, Miss Henry, for such a awesome. Now, boys and girls, remember our Miss Henry. Remember our theme for today. We are to love to one another. All right. I want you to talk, be quiet. And turn over to our principal, Mrs. Mitchell. Mrs. Good Mitchell. morning, everyone. Yes, I'm here. Good morning, all. It's indeed a privilege to join you this morning again for devotion. Just wanna say thanks to Mrs. Williams and her team for conducting such a wonderful devotion. And the theme this morning is love. And the, for, there was a song that was being played at the beginning that says, love suffereth long, love, love has no boundaries. And the story of the Samaritan actually shows that love really has no boundaries. We do not make a choice as to who we love or whom we do not love. As long as someone is in need, we should extend our help and our love to such a person. So I say thanks to the devotion team for this morning. We are grateful to God for propelling us into a new week. We are thankful that he has spared our lives and we are up and ready for what the week has to offer, the challenges, the triumphs, and everything that this week has to offer. Okay, so this morning, we are supposed to be having two of our students presenting two of our candidates for head boy, head girl, will be presenting this morning. I trust that they are ready. I am going to just greet you and hand over to Mrs. Walters, who will call them and we will listen to them. At the end of their speech, I will return. I greet you well. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Mrs. Walters, go ahead. All right, good morning, students. Good morning, teachers. Welcome to another week and another general debate to see us all out this morning. And so we will be customer. We are um, showcasing our student leaders, and we have selected some students who will be representing us at that level. And this morning, two of those students will be presenting to us. Their, 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 
what we call their, their manifesto, what are their plans for our institution. And so I'm going to ask Jaden Moulton. I don't know if he's in. Are you in, Jaden? Could you please indicate so that we can uh, unmute you? Are you in, Jaden? Jaden Moulton? All right, until we, let me try and reach out to Jaden. So I'm going to ask the, the, well, they say ladies should go first. So maybe I should have asked her first. I'm going to ask the lady among us, among the, the set this morning, Praise Marie Cohen, to go ahead with her presentation. Praise Marie is a grade six student at our institution, a very well-rounded student. And uh, please sit back students, teachers, and be prepared for her speech. I'm very excited because I know Praise has something for us. So go ahead, Praise Marie. Over to you at this time. To our school principal, Mrs. Cheryl Grant Mitchell, guidance counselors, Mrs. Dinham Walters and Mrs. Gluck, esteemed teachers, fellow schoolmates and other members of the Anchovy Primary family, a pleasant morning to you all. I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude for this nomination in consideration for a student leader position. I must say it would be an honor for me to serve my beloved institution. But first, let me take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Praise Marie Cohen, and I am 10, almost 11 years old. I am currently a member of the Grade 6 Marvelous class and a proud 2020 to 2021 JCDC two times gold medalist. I am from a humble Christian family and the second of three siblings. My hobbies include cooking, reading, and writing stories. In the near future, I would like to secure a pass to the Montego Bay High School for Girls through the primary exit profiles examination. And ultimately, I would like to pursue a career in teaching. The COVID-19 pandemic has, in truth, impacted and displaced us all, adults and children alike. However, it is the abused and unfortunate children within our student body that has my attention. This particular issue is one that is in my heart, not just merely a slot in today's presentation, but something my family and I pray about every day. If I'm selected head girl of this noble institution, it would give me an opportunity to solidify my prayer with works. A part of my mandate would be to identify these children and help to, to provide support. It would be my pleasure to give these children a voice and an outlet that will not only be a listening ear, but a vehicle to change. It is my intention to work closely with the guidance and counseling department as an advocate to identify and bring to the fore these children who so badly need support and intervention. Please afford me this opportunity. Next, with the rise of increased online time came the rise of cyberbullying. This is a very unfortunate reality that we must face and strive to eliminate from our institution and daily interaction. Given the chance to be this year's head girl, I would work closely with our principals and teachers to establish a digital policing system within our online space. These police officers, if you will, will direct responsibilities to identify and report offenders. They would assist our teachers by providing the extra pair of eyes and ears 
that are needed to monitor our digital community. I would be honored to be a part of the leadership team to make this happen. Lastly, I will leave you all with a quote from Mr. John C. Maxwell, a world-renowned author, motivational speaker, and life coach. He said, and I quote, leaders must be close enough to relate to, it to others, but far enough ahead to motivate them. I am proud to have been given this opportunity to represent our school in many capacities over the years. I believe I am a strong and exemplary leader, and if given another opportunity to represent the Anchovy Primary School as your head girl, it would be my absolute pleasure to showcase to the world of diversity and gifts and talents that we possess. My Anchovy family, I thank you. Come on, come on, let us let us make some noise of praise, Marie. Let us make some noise of praise, Marie. And let me see you put some hearts on the screen, put some love in the chat. That was praise, Marie. Awesome, awesome, awesome praise, Marie. And I'm looking forward for you working with my department. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much. And now we we'll go over to uh, Jaden Moulton. He's all. And he has been a very exemplary student, one that has set example for the boys in his class. And we're looking forward to hear Jaden's uh, speech this morning. So Jaden, it is over to you at this time. Thank you, Miss Dinam. I used to think that to be successful in life, it took away from your free time your family and your friends. I used to think success was measured based on what you can show with the money that you have or the grades that you attained from a test. You might be wondering, what is this child saying? As young as he is, what does he know of success? But I say to you today that my parents taught me and had been constantly reminding me that to be successful, I must be able to get the people around me to push beyond their limits, whilst developing a level of confidence in me. Believing that I am capable of bringing out the best in them. My parents also instilled in me that in order to be successful, I must be the embodiment of success. Not to show off, but to act as a pillar, as a pillar that the people around me want to emulate. My aim is to see every student here successful. My motto today, success, we will achieve it together. The principal, Mrs. Mitchell, the teachers, fellow candidates for the head boy position, boys and girls of the Anchovy Primary School, a pleasant morning to you all. My name is Jaden Moulton, and I am confident that I will be your head boy for the year 2021. The Anchovy Primary School is where my father and my uncle found themselves and took productive steps and made solid decisions to be that, the men that they are today. This school is a monument built on the memories and the successes of my uncle and father. And like any other proud son and nephew, who the button has, has been passed on to, it is my duty to leave an even bigger mark. As your head boy, it will be my responsibility to ensure that you, my fellow classmates, are given the resources that you will need to be an embodiment of success. Not only for you, but for the generations that will come after you. Success, my fellow colleagues. As your head boy, we will achieve it together. In closing, I will share a story with you. 
On an elephant camp, the elephants were tied at their necks with a tiny rope that was holding them back from escaping. Only because they grew up believing that they could not break free. So they stayed in captivity. They didn't realize that they had the power as full grown elephants to break free and escape. So you see, the only reason the elephants were not breaking free was that over time, they adopted the belief that it was not possible. As you are soon to be head boy, I want to encourage you that no matter how much this world tried to hold you back, always continue with the belief that you want to, that what you want to achieve is possible. And I am confident that I will be able to show you that if you put your mind to something with the right attitude, you will be able to achieve it. Success, we will achieve it together. Have a great day, everyone, and thank you. Wow, 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 wow. Oh my God. Students, let's put some reaction on the screen for Jaden Moulton. Let me see if I can get some celebration here. I don't know about you, but I was so attentive as he spoke just now. Awesome presentation, Jaden. Awesome presentation. And we know that you are you are in position to be a, one of the great leaders coming out of this school. So this, you have it this morning, students. These are two of our candidates. They are vying for the position of head boy and head girl. You have heard their speeches and I hope like me, they have convicted you because I feel fully convicted. If they were uh, given an altar call this morning, I would be at the altar ready to go into that pool. That's how convicted I feel this morning by these awesome, awesome speeches. And so we continue to shine. We continue to aspire to believe and to conquer. I don't know if, Madam, Madam Principal, do you want to return now or do we take the anthem and then you come after? Let me return and then the, the anthem closes us out. So okay. at the end of the anthem, we will just see to our different classes. I am totally flabbergasted. I am impressed. I have absolutely nothing. I would not add, I would not subtract. If you notice, I was among those sending the reactions up on the screen. We will just wait to see how the others do as we proceed. But just listening to these two young people this morning gives me a lot of hope that amidst the challenges that we are facing in the online space, amid the multiple issues that we are having, there are some young people that are ready to lead, lead in the challenging times. And I am grateful to God that some of them are really among us at Anchovy Primary School. Congratulations, lady and gentlemen. And we hope that the others that will come will present a challenge. So we will have a hard time deciding who will be going ahead and who will be the, 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 the deputies. However, we are looking at some leaders that are going to lead not only Anchovy Primary School, but will eventually lead the world. As of the ne next week, next week we will be, I will not be making the announcements. We will have students or student leaders moving forward with the announcements in the mornings. The grade one exams continue. The grade one classes, however, will be taught they will do some arrangements down there to ensure that those who are who have already done their exams will get a chance to move forward with some lessons. And those who have not yet done the exams will be able to do their exams. We ask that for the parents who are listening in with us this morning, that you watch the grade one group and ensure that whatever time your child gets to come. The teachers have made the sacrifice to be at school. Please make an effort to come. Please make an effort to come because we cannot test the children 
for the entire term. So if you get tomorrow, if you are not able to come, please get somebody to come along with the child. It's just half an hour out of the child's time and that aspect of school have been finished after that half an hour has expired. So please make an effort to work within the confines of the times that the teachers have sacrificed to leave their homes because at this point we are asked to teach from home. We are asked to teach from home. We, so we, the, 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 the meeting with students is a sacrifice that teachers would have made. So ensure that it is appreciated and that the teachers do not come and sit around and parents don't show because we cannot go testing for the entire term. For the grade six, the deadline for the submission of forms was on Friday. It means that we'll be tying up. Our deadline will be to send to the, everything to the ministry tomorrow to ensure that everything is uploaded by tomorrow. It means then that if you had slipped up and did not get a chance to submit on Friday, you would have to get those forms to us today. You do not have to come in to submit the form. Students who are in the group, please inform your parents. They do not have to come in to submit the form. The forms can, a picture of the form can be taken and you can send it via WhatsApp or via email to the teacher. You also students can take it to your classrooms and you, you let your teacher get the information, tell you how they can get the information from you. I wouldn't say upload it in the classroom, so do not go ahead and upload your information in the classroom, but you can speak to teacher if you have that information available with you. Now, if, this, if, if tomorrow passes, it means that you will not be registered for the exam. If tomorrow passes, I posted this information last week, Sunday, so we have juggled an entire week. If tomorrow passes, it means that you not, are not going to be able to do that exam. Also, those who, whose parents would want you to get another year in grade six, I had said that in the, in the PTA meeting, a letter has to be written. That is something that the decision has to be made today. That decision, if it has not been made already, it has to be made today. You would have actually given enough time for you to make that submission. Ensure that your grade six children, if you're in the group, ensure that your forms are submitted or your grade six would be just of none effect and sure that your forms are submitted. So please ask your parents if the forms were submitted and the ones who are still being tested, ensure that your children, parents get the IDRI and the, the, the goal is done. The other thing I wanna say is that we have to, understand for the parents who are listening in that when a teacher starts teaching, he or she may not be able to respond to you on the phone. He or she has your child as well as the other and the classes are big. So I can say the other 40 odd children to attend to who are online. So if the phones are, if you are trying to get in touch with the teacher during the daytime, it's not the best time to try to get in touch with the teacher because the teacher will more than likely be teaching and he or she will not be able to speak with you whilst teaching. So whatever the, the concern is, kindly keep your concerns until say about 2.30, 3 o'clock when teachers are finished with their classes. It's unfair to the other children for a teacher to stop, stop what he or she is doing for 15 minutes to speak with one parent and the other children sit online. And we know that the online space is a dangerous space. 
and they can do anything at all whilst they are online. So please keep the calls during the daytime. Persons are calling me to say they are calling the teachers and they are not getting them. You can call the teacher during school time. That's not fair. So try to keep the calls until after three and you can always call me because it's, the, it's during the work week. So if there's a concern about, and the technology team is out there, if there's a concern about you logging on and you're not getting in, it's best if you reach out to somebody from a technology team or myself, and I might just shoot a text to the teacher and he or she will see it in real time. But you, it doesn't make any sense to try to call the teacher to say, the child is not getting to log on. The teacher, the teacher is actually admitting other students. So reach out to somebody from the technology team. You would have had most of their numbers. A number of persons would have reached out to them from time to time. So ensure that the children get the maximum. They are not really getting what they would have gotten when we were in the physical space. So we do not want to limit what they are able to get with the number of times that teacher, and you have to understand that if you're trying to call, there might just be two or three other parents who are trying to call, and the teachers are teaching individual subjects is an hour each. So if we speak to the teacher 45 minutes out of the hour, it means that the students would get 15 minutes teaching. If everybody calls and speak for 15 minutes, it likely, the students will get nothing at all. So try not to call the teachers during the daytime. I still am working on the teachers recording, seeing if we can get the lessons recorded so they can be available at a later time so that nobody will miss out. But at this point, I don't think they will really miss out because teachers are aware of the challenges of the time. Thank you so much. Have yourselves a wonderful day. The national anthem will now be sung or played, will now be played. And at the end of the anthem, Mrs. Walter will play some music and you will move out of this room and to your classes. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. And as we get... For the end, just reminding me, are uh, focusing on the value for the month. So, value statements and actions, please recite them and have them ready for our social session coming up on Friday. You will get the specific times. Our psychosocial sessions will be coming this Friday. Thank you very much, and stand at attention for the our school's anthem, followed by the national anthem.
Thank you very much, students. You may proceed to your classes next time. Please log off and log into your various classes. Your teachers are there waiting for you. Thank you very much. Have a great week. Remember to be loyal. Check your Google Classroom for your value statements. And we will see you all on Friday morning, 9.45 for grades 1 to 3 and 10.30 for grades 4 to 6. All right, so see you all on Friday morning. Have a great day. Bye, bye, bye. Take care now and be safe. your light, let it shine for all. Let your good deeds glow for all to see, so that they will praise your heavenly Father. That means when we love God, He shines out of us like a bright light. Then everyone around us can see His light and say, Wow! God is amazing!